Hi everyone. The purpose of this video is to summarise the different notations used to represent differential equations. To give you an idea, here are a few ways to represent the same differential equation. So this could be confusing, and the aim of this video is to demystify the symbolic representation of the ODEs and PDEs. Let's start with an ODE, which is the ordinary differential equation, and involves a function and its derivatives. Here we have the first derivative, but it can contain derivatives of any order. This is one way to represent the derivatives, and is due to Leibniz, who was an early developer of calculus, and the lucky recipient of the Newton's anagram that we mentioned in the previous video. A second alternative way to write the derivatives is to use primes. This approach is due to Lagrange. And of course, you can only write so many primes. So one switches to integers starting with the fourth. The brackets are there to avoid confusion with the power. Here is the deterministic part of the mean reverting process we have seen before in this notation. In physics, this is Hooke's law. Newton uses dots, and this notation is usually employed when the independent variable represents time. By the way, Leibniz was German, Newton was British, and Lagrange was French. Had to mention this, by the way, to make it easy to pick a side. Let's side with the French for now. Now, this differential equation has a very specific form. But how can one refer to the general class of such ODEs, meaning first-order ODEs? To see, shift everything to the left-hand side. And now we can see the left-hand side is just some function of the three variables, the independent variable x, the unknown function y, and its derivative. Capital F is short for function. So it is not a specific function, by the way. The derivative is usually represented by p, because it is not a variable as such. So this implicit function now represents a general ODE, in which we have an unknown function of a single variable and its first derivative. Some specific examples could be the linear ODE, or slightly more complicated ODE, in which we have some power of y or an even more awe-inspiring one, in which we have some function of the derivative. But from the symbolic perspective, all these equations have x, y, and the first derivative. And that's what our implicit function representation of the ODE captures. For some purposes, it is convenient to represent the equation in the normal form. Essentially, you isolate the highest derivative on one side, as you can see, not all equations can be represented in this form. Obvious example being the third equation. But this form facilitates analysis of the ODE. Now, in the single independent variable world, the equation can contain second order derivative, third order derivative, and so on. But we can easily represent such equations. We just have to include the additional derivatives in the arguments and we might be able to isolate the highest derivative and write the equation in the normal form. Let's move to the PDE representation then. Let's say the unknown function u is a function of two variables, x and y. So we will have the partial derivatives now, which are usually represented by writing the variable in the subscript. So u, subscript x, represents the partial derivative of u with respect to x, and u subscript y represents the partial derivative with respect to y. Thus we can represent a partial differential equation containing an unknown function of two variables, and its first order derivatives as follows. Notice y here is the independent variable, and the two partial derivatives are also commonly represented by p and q, just like in the ODE case we had p, so here we have p and q.
because we have two derivatives. Let's see an example. The partial derivatives can also be represented using the cursive form. And the form is also abbreviated sometimes. We can easily write the second order derivatives. They will just have two variables in the subscript. And adding these to the argument of the function, we get the representation of the partial differential equation of an unknown function of two variables, which contains first and second order derivatives. You can also try to represent these in the normal form, by the way, by isolating the highest order derivative of interest on the left-hand side. Now, for the final representation. We can view the differential as an operator that acts on a function to produce another function. Let's see the Kolmogorov equation. So, it has time and spatial derivatives. The time and spatial derivatives play different roles in many cases. So that's why you will only see the right-hand side is used to define the operator associated with this PDE. And in the case of feynman cac or Black-Scholes, when one has the unknown function in the equation as a separate term, then the unknown function term is not included in the operator either. Because it has some significance in terms of the interpretation and stochastic representation of this PDE. Now, the next main business is to determine whether the operator is linear. If it does happen to be linear, then one has access to a substantial amount of established theory. And when it is non-linear, then one has interesting problems to impress with. And that's what nature does, as so many of the problems it presents are non-linear. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.